the highway north to the capital may be full of people trying to flee. But Beirut's international airport was uncharacteristically quiet. Most flights have already been cancelled. Most airlines have decided to stay well clear. A valid outbound ticket is a precious thing indeed. For the last uh, 48 hours, I'd say we've been sitting on eggshells, really. We've been, uh, and, uh, I mean, yeah, because we, uh, like, we hear one thing happen and then another, then another. It's, you know, we, uh, we have no clue what's going to happen next. What is it like to be in Lebanon at the moment? How does it feel? It's like, a, it's like a toxic relationship. You can't be here, but you love being here. There's, there's, there's a lot that you love about it. There's a family here, there's a lot to do. But at the same time, we have to think about our safety, our future. The majority here were Lebanese, but there were British nationals too. Maher Ali, wearing red, lives in North London. He'd just been to see his parents in South Lebanon. What did you see? What did you experience? Um, well, explosion everywhere. It's just been hitting and I can't hear them all day, all night long. Since two days we have to, myself and some part of my member of my family, we have to escape from south to, um, to ward uh, Beirut. Mr Ali came because his mother was unwell. I've been here only 12 days. Yeah, so I knew, like, I didn't know it was going to hit that bad, but I knew there are war, but there are situations, some people, they have to come and check families. It's not about, it's not holiday, you got me, it's an emergency. The British Prime Minister is worried. Leave Lebanon immediately, he says, but it's not so simple for some. In Beirut's southern suburbs, we found the telltale signs of war. This Range Rover repair shop was flattened overnight. Um, Britain Malhassan Aldada lives nearby. Hi, nice to meet you. The mother of two is from Manchester. Her husband okay. is Lebanese. Okay. Last night was very bad. Like the sounds were non-stop, the bombs, and we could see actually from there, um, you could see the 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 flames going up. Malhassan wants to take her children back to Britain. Problem is, she doesn't know how. So I thought I might as well just take them and leave. So I tried, I've been trying all day to, to find tickets and there's no commercial flights, everything's gone. She has called the Foreign Office for travel advice, but it wasn't reassuring. I was hoping that they would be a bit more of help. That's what I thought, that, you know, like the movies, they'd come and pick you up or something. <laughs> and it's not that way at all. They just say there's nothing that they can do. Making the decision to leave is one thing. Finding a way to do it, another. But it's now a necessity for many in Lebanon as this country hurtles into war. John Sparks, Sky News in Beirut.